Des Moines, Illinois. Population, 7,500. On the eve of an invasion. We hope that our uh, police protection is sufficient. I think we have about five, six policemen. The question of the amount of litter and trash that this many people accumulate and whether there will be crowds and noise and hubbub. We're hoping that we have sufficient uh, medical supplies and... Uh, the grocery shopping is really going to be bad with 10,000 people coming in and... More people the merrier. I think the town can stand a few people in it for change and see what it's going to be like. MCAs in Dayton, Hayes Fair Acres, at DuCoin, Illinois. But what is this FMCA? The initials stand for the Family Motor Coach Association. And when these folks hold a convention, they need a lot of room. They come from all parts of the country, from the east to the west and the south and the North. The association is made up of people who are the hybrids of American camping families, those who own and operate motor coaches, sometimes referred to as motor homes. And they use their coaches for fun and for travel and as a means to get close to the great American outdoors. The vehicles come in all shapes and sizes and represent a substantial investment to their owners. Well, let's meet the people who make up this new highway jet set. They're the lifeblood of the Family Motor Coach Association. They represent people from all over the country, from all walks of life. Their makeup is as varied as the coaches they drive. Straight up, straight up. I don't back. The people of the FMCA have developed a new lifestyle. Individual families use their coaches, driving on the average of 12,000 miles a year. They have used their organization to plan activities in which they can participate, but more important, to form close relationships with people of similar interests. And when they gather together, their fellowship and outgoing personalities become immediately evident. While latecomers unpack their belongings for their stay, other FMCA members start to explore in Hayes Fair Acres. The conveyances used are a story in themselves. Like good guests, they pay courtesy calls on their appreciative hosts. It doesn't take long for the town of DeCoin to take this informal and friendly group to heart. The merchants, of course, benefit from the invasion, but the townspeople also display their generous hospitality. And soon, every conventioneer feels at home. Meanwhile, at the Jubilee, the fun has begun. Some take advantage of the attractions offered by Hayes Fair Acres. There's a tricky miniature golf course for one, and there's the oldest conveyance known to man. 
The fairgrounds is the site of the world-famous Hamiltonian, the harness racing classic. It's perhaps natural that it should offer horseback riding as one of the many things to do. But the heart of the activity is contained in the inter-chapter rivalry. The FMCA is an amalgamation of local and regional chapters. And they bear such colorful names as Cruisin' Cajun, the Penn Coachman, or the Rollin' Rebels, about the Minnesota Pioneers, and the Rocky Mountain Chapter. These groups are pitted against one another in a convention tradition, the Canoe Battle. recognize the material benefits that come from the members of the Family Motor Coach Association. Indeed, they too are part of the association, enjoying the benefits of special commercial memberships. They've come in force to show their wares. And since the members of the association are intensely interested in new developments and directions in the field of motor coaching, they come each day. And they look, and they appraise, and they ask questions and offer suggestions based on practical knowledge. They can be the severest critics in pursuit of perfection for their hobby. Motor coaching has become big business. And industry has recognized the fact. They listen with respect to these consumers. When given the chance, they proudly display their latest models to an admiring public. Inside the grandstand building, the space has been turned into a display area for the multitude of components and equipment used inside these homes on wheels. Also on display are copies of the popular FMCA magazine published by the association. Whenever motor coaches gather, food is in evidence. And during the time set aside for the chapters to hold open house, the people from the Northeast take the opportunity to introduce members to their justly famous seafood. A waiting line stretches throughout the grounds. The bill of fare is fish and chips. <laughs> Through the darkened grounds floats the strains of a familiar song. Nighttime entertainment is furnished by the Midwest chapter entertaining the FMCA members with a sing-song. The hospitality is evident in the musical selection. at the convention had a habit of starting out slow and lazy. And on Sunday, there were church services. By whatever name we call you, by whatever mental image we think of you, grant our dear God that every soul here may find and be found. But most mornings were occupied by an unhurried awakening process that included a trip for coffee and donuts supplied by one of the public-spirited commercial members. Now, the teenage organization of the Family Motor Coats Association is known as TATS. That's Teenage Travelers. And they held a slave auction, offering their services to whoever would bid. Come on, what the biggest you're going to get? Get him seven and a half. I got ten dollars. What? 
I got $10 twice. No. Somebody better holler. And the proceeds went to charity, while the victims went to work. The people of Southern Illinois responded to the FMCA enthusiasm by displaying the pioneer skills of their ancestors. New friendships were formed when members stopped to watch the craft demonstration. And they were given the benefit of the secrets of over two centuries of skilled Illinois craftsmanship. And the conventioneers repaid in kind. They returned again and again to frequent the sidewalk sales that were staged for their benefit by the people of DuCoin, Illinois. Now, as the members were shopping, the temperatures climbed and climbed and climbed. And back at the fairgrounds, the industry safety and maintenance seminars slowed under the sultry July sun. And some of the younger members invented their own methods of keeping cool and clean at the same time. And they soon enticed their elders to join in the fun. Other members of the TATS organization chose more conventional means to keep their cool. Perhaps the most unusual method for reducing body temperature was the entrant chapter tug of war. shadows lengthened, the weather seemed to get hotter, and the heat was rivaled by the spices used in the cooking of the Louisiana chapter. Now their contribution was a bountiful spread of authentic Cajun food. To many northerners, the spice content was about as unfamiliar as the 100 degree heat. The evening saw a return to fine entertainment. The Statler brothers received a warm FMCA welcome, and their offerings of popular religious numbers received a wild ovation from all of the members. After the Statler brothers, the chapters again take over the entertainment. FMCA member Gary Shope treats one and all to his impersonation of Johnny Camp. As the young and old join in the fun supplied by the informal sing-songs, the teenage travelers dance on into the night. Now the FMCA tats seemed undeterred by the efforts expended during the day. Most of them had worked for charity as a result of their successful slave auction, and they now seemed bent on grabbing a moment of enjoyment during the last hours of the day. The last day of the convention and the heat continues unabated. Organized events are almost over, but there's one more important happening. Now, in the afternoon, the membership gather to hear their elected president's report, to rule on new motions, and to question their executive group. The Family Motor Coach Association is made up of thousands of member families from all over the land, and they have a continuing interest in the workings of their elected representatives. They maintain a salaried staff of hard-working professionals who are responsible for arranging these conventions, publishing a top-level association magazine, and for a multitude of efficient member services. It's at this annual meeting they voice the opinions that will direct the development of their association. The growth of their organization has been phenomenal. The growth on the East Coast, that is Northeast and Southeast, because there we had the convention in the Northeast, and we had Meadow Island in the Southeast. That was between 80 and 90 percent. 
It's time to prepare for home or further travel. Before leaving Hayes Fair Acres and Ducoin, the members are to be treated to one more grandstand spectacular. The Up With People cast have arrived. They receive a tumultuous welcome. The hospitality is so infectious that they can't help but ask the audience to get into the act. And the response is immediate. While the teams dance on into the night, the informal chapter sing-alongs continue. But there is yet one more surprise in store for the happy coaches. The town comes to the fairgrounds en masse, and they're determined to show the FMCA their hospitality in a dramatic fashion. What follows is a faithful recounting of that warm July night, filled with spontaneous fun and lots of hospitality. I welcome you. You've been a tremendous inspiration to this town. We welcome you anytime. <laughs> Taking from Ducoin comes the following morning. The commercial displays are taken down and loaded to be brought out again for next year's convention. Friends talk quietly of their plans before boarding their coaches. There's a last cup of coffee to be sipped, and some members work on last-minute repairs before taking to the road. And they're assisted by old and new friends, for it's a precept of the FMCA to always lend a hand to a fellow member in distress. President Harry Palmer makes the rounds saying goodbye. It's always a, um, a kind of a sad feeling at the end of one of these conventions because uh, here you've been associating, associated with people for several days, but you know that you're going to be another one someday, and then uh, the favorite parting word is from one motor coach to another, we'll see you down the road. Executive Director Ken Scott has his own observations as he wishes departing members a safe journey. It gives me great personal satisfaction to see how our hobby draws the family together. This, I think, is the heart of the Family Motor Coach Association. Our activities offer a way in which they can participate together and thereby become closer. the peaceful invasion has come to an end. The invaders are anxious to get on their way. Travel, after all, is in the blood of this new highway jet set. And they leave with fond memories of this small town in the heartland of the American Midwest. Behind them, they've left a lasting impression of warmth and friendliness. To those in Ducoin who once doubted that this experience would be a happy one, there has been a dramatic change in attitude. Let those who first doubted speak for themselves as we survey a town unchanged except for a rich, memorable experience. My first concern was uh, police protection. 
Well, the coaches have arrived and departed, and everything went along fine. As far as the literature was concerned, uh, the problem simply didn't develop. They were so quiet and so well behaved that you hardly knew they were in town. Possibly my fears were unfounded uh, in connection with the congested traffic. I always said we could use 10,000 people, and the people that came were the kind of people we like to have. And these people were just great. It was a lovely experience.